Now, let's talk about uh, the Narconon plan to establish a drug rehabilitation centre in Beliver. Janet Laveau is a spokesperson for Narconon and on the line with us now. And a very good morning to you and thank you indeed for joining us here on the programme this morning. As you know, there's been huge concern about uh, the plans uh, for this centre because of your links with uh, the Church of Scientology. Good morning, Michael. Yes. Um, thank you very much. And um, I think what I wanted to let people know is that um, the Narconon program is um, it's a very um, long-term program that has been in existence for more than 50 years. Okay, and perhaps and we can talk about that in a moment, uh, but you accept mm-hmm. that the concern is because of your links with the Church of Scientology? No, I understand that um, there has been that concern, but um, to be clear on that, the, uh, the Church proudly supports the Narconon program. Um, but that's where the extent of it goes in terms of there's no religious aspect to the program. But your and, program um, was devised uh, by Ron Hubbard, was it not? It was devised by um, Ron Hubbard back in the um, late 60s. Um, so it's a Church uh, of Scientology program? It's, it's a program that is based on the works of Mr. Hubbard and his research into the field. The of founder of the Church of Scientology. So it's a Church of Scientology program. Uh, 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 are you taking issue with it being described as such? No, 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 no. no, no, no okay, no. so it I is. Guess I, just, I just I wanted to delineate, uh, Michael, mm-hmm. that it is um, it's sponsored by, it is supported by, um, but the program itself is not a religious-based program. That's all I wanted to, to make clear. Okay. Um, You know about the concern that there is locally and you wrote to public representatives and uh, the uh, local community group and suggested Mm -hmm. meeting with them. Did that meeting take place? No, it did not. Why not? Um, They had, um, they have filed for an application, a Section 5 application with the uh, Onboard Planella and they wanted to wait until as I understand it, they wanted to wait until there was a decision from the uh, board planella before they uh, would meet. Right, and did uh, that determine your decision to go to the Meath Chronicle and outline your plans? Um, That was already part of the plans uh, because we wanted to get out there and tell people what was actually... um, Yes, but your publicity uh, agent said that you would not be speaking to the media until after you had spoken to the community and uh, the community representatives. Um, Well, that plan changed um, when the committee did not want to meet with us before the planning um, decision had actually come through. So we decided that we were going to proceed because we felt that the community had a right to know and should know what is actually um, the Narconon program, what it would bring to the community, um, the facility, what the facility would look like, the benefits that would be coming to the community. The 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 community doesn't want you doesn't want your program based in Beliver? Um, that's not necessarily um, a completely understood. We've had um, people who supported the program. Um, I mean, from Ireland, we've had approximately 45 or so people that have gone through the program in the United Kingdom and in Holland, and we've had, we have had support. I think that um, what has happened is well, that... Um, well, you went on a... a, a a, a charm offensive uh, in terms of outlining to people locally what you're planning in Beliver by speaking to the Bead Chronicle. And in that interview, you said you've never seen anything like the level of opposition in your entire life. So it's not mm-hmm. too far off the mark to say that the community of Beliver don't want you. I would say that in the, um, the response that has been reported in the media is as such. But in speaking with other people in the area... Um, what we have found is that there is support for such a program. There is a, a big problem in the Beliver area, in the whole Meath area, and, I mean, obviously, as we know, in the country, and not just in Ireland, but it's an epidemic problem of drugs and alcohol abuse. What support is um, there for having, the program? What support is there for the program? The yes. program is supported internationally. No, what support the, is there in Beliver for the program? There's been support from the local people. Um, Which in, local in, people? In, in talking to people. Well, I'm not. You I don't think on the radio I'm going to go over. Um, you know, naming well, I, people. I, I could. So I, forth, I, I, I could name a few who are opposed to it. Uh, I'm just wondering mm-hmm. if you could name anyone who is in support of it. 
Well, I don't have their approval to give their names. Yeah. So we'll just leave it at that, Michael. Okay. Um, well, well, but it, but but you, I think you just have to take it on board that we have been talking to people, and there's a there's a, an absolute agreement that there is a room and there is a need for rehabilitation programs um, in this country. There's a huge not in the liver. of beds and. Uh, and you're going to have 33 people uh, trying to get off drugs at this centre in Beliver, is it? Um, the capacity for the program is um, 34 students and 18 staff that would be um, on the premises, and they would um, the the students just to waylay people's fears and so forth as to what that actually means. Narconon is a drug-free program. Mm. The people who come on to the program. Um, are people who them themselves want to get off of drugs. They, they know that once they get onto the program that they will be staying on the property. Mm. Um, anyone who, who does need to go off the property through the course of the program would be supervised by a staff member. And half it's of these uh, will come from outside of Ireland. Well, our experience shows that... Um, People, when they're doing a rehabilitation program, want to get away from their local area for, you know, for their own various reasons. But many times... What, what kind down, of drug addicts they want can to, afford this? That they can come from England or wherever it is and pay you €4,000 a month? 18000 is it? That's what the cost of the program is in um, England. Um, and that general cost is, is pretty normal. For, so what kind um, of drugs are these people on? Are, are, are they on them. antidepressants or, or what kind of drugs are they on? Because heroin addicts don't tend to have that sort of loose change. The people will be on a whole different variety of drugs. Such as? Um, there's heroin, cocaine, um, cannabis, Her- heroin. alcohol addiction. Heroin. Heroin addicts tend to burgle houses or become prostitutes. They don't have that kind of spare cash. Um, people, it's a private rehab, and um, if the individuals, many times people have family members that want to get them off of the um, the drugs, and they they're willing to pay that amount of money. People will will pay for that uh, program the same as they do for other programs in in Ireland and in other places around the world. And what's the eighteen thousand euro for? You provo- provide food and board, vitamin tablets, and a sauna. And the, um, the staff, we do provide that. It's, it covers the uh, room and the board. It covers the, um, the supplements and the materials and so forth. And then that also provides very, um, you know, and one-on-one assistance for the individuals. It's, not, it's, it's a different type of a program than when people go in for um, group counseling. And you provide moral guidance. Twice a week. It's, it's, it's one-on-one guidance all the way through the program. Moral guidance. Moral guidance, physical assistance where okay. they need when someone's well, going the, through withdrawal. There, obviously, they need a lot of assistance. There, therein lies the physically. problem for a lot of people because they're concerned that moral guidance is being given, but is being given by the Church of Scientology in Beliver. The guidance that is given is um, through the, the, the whole delivery of the program. And I must say, Michael, that the program has been in existence for more than 50 years. It has a, a, a huge success rate. And the success stories of people coming through the program, um, they're off drugs, they have their lives back under the control, and they can get back on with it. Right. Uh, it's cold turkey. Um, it's not straight cold turkey. Um, when It's cold turkey with, with vitamins, a sauna, and... Moral guidance from the Church of Scientology. Okay, so let me explain the, the, the withdrawal procedure. When a person is, has had a heavy drug or alcohol problem, they will have a body which is depleted of nutrition, vitamins, and, and sleep. <clears throat> so the whole point of the program is to start to replace the, the nutritional deficiencies and to use a technique which is um, called ASSIST to help with the spasms and so forth. Um, part of the mineral supplementation is a formula for calcium and magnesium, which helps with the spasms and so forth. No withdrawal process is completely, um, you know, a walk in the park, but it definitely alleviates, and people have um, said that they have been, you know, surprised that how, you know, quickly and how much easier it is to get through the withdrawal with the vitamins, the, the minerals, and the nutrition. What medical research is there to support what you're saying? 
Um, if one Googles the use of um, vitamins in um, drug withdrawal, you will find a lot of medical reports that support this. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of medical reports that would support the use of vitamins uh, regardless of whether you're coming off drugs or, or not. But what medical research is there to suggest that this is a, a way for people to... Uh, stop using drugs to get over an addiction uh, apart from it supporting a body that's in recovery? The Narcodon program regards um, people doing the program as students. A large part of the um, program involves um, studying life skills programs so that the person can actually work through the problems that led them to take drugs or alcohol in the first place. We don't believe that that an an individual is addicted for life, um, that he actually can sort through the reasons that brought him to that place in the uh, in the or that to that spot in the first place, and to work their way through. Mm. That's 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 your belief. But is there any health authority in the world that supports that belief that has implemented a program of this sort itself outside of Narcanon? Uh, the Narcanon program is um, fully accredited and has been for many, many years by uh, CARF in the uh, United States, which is international standards. Um, it is also registered in the United Kingdom with the um, Care Quality Commission. Um, in every area where the program has been established, it is um, accredited and um, established to the standards of the laws and regulations of that local country. Okay, and you believed that the regulations in this country in terms of planning were similar to that of the UK. There is some surprise locally that uh, a body as big uh, and as well advised as uh, the Church of Scientology could have made such a mistake. We made no mistake in terms of, you. In the, if you were talking about the planning. Yes, the, the planning application was filed according to the regulations um, that were required. Yeah, but you told the uh, Mead Chronicle you thought it was similar to the planning regulations of the United Kingdom. And that wasn't exactly what I said, Michael. What I said was that the not aware that in this particular instance, because there was no change of uh, planning that was required, that there would not be something that was posted um, as normally is when one puts in a planning application. Okay. Um, there's many uh, different organizations involved in this country in uh, drug rehabilitation and assisting mm-hmm. people who have uh, addictions, uh, and uh, many of uh, those are regulated by the HSE. Uh, but in terms of your program, uh, how does it fit into a drug rehabilitation uh, setting, uh, given that there are so many experienced counsellors and uh, medical uh, people who are working in this field, what medical expertise do you bring to this? Um, when someone comes on to the program, before they enter into the program and are accepted, they have they go um, they see a general practitioner who gives them the bill of health to actually do the program. And then at another stage in the program, they are re-examined very thoroughly by um, a doctor. There is... It's a a non-medical program. Okay, it is a non-medical program. It's a non-medical program. Okay. But the person does have to be medically fit to do the program. Okay, uh, and I, I think that's the point uh, because uh, there is uh, proposals uh, that legislation would be introduced in this country uh, mm-hmm. that rehabilitation programs of this sort would have to be medically based and evidence based. Okay. Does that concern you? No. It doesn't concern. Whatever the requirements are of the local country. Um, are the requirements that we put into the program. Mm -hmm. Narconon is dedicated to getting people off drugs, getting them a life that they can actually live that's under their control, free from the use of drugs or alcohol. Whatever the requirements are in the country that they're in are the requirements that we um, institute. Okay, Uh, it seems a fairly expensive program. Uh, Where does the money go? The money uh, goes to the program. It's a non-profit organization. 
Um, and so all of the funds that come from the individuals doing the program um, support the payment of the staff, the upkeep of the property, the food, and so forth. It's a fairly expensive program to run then, is it not? It is an expensive program. It's a very thorough program. The program addresses the whole individual, taking them through the withdrawal um, and then through the life skills. When the person himself you know, feels like they are ready, then they will graduate the program. And does any of the money go to the Church of Scientology? No, there's no funds that go to the Church of Scientology. Um, on the contrary, it's uh, generally Scientologists that contribute to establishing the program. Right, okay. So you're talking about in the region of €6 million Euro a year to run this program? Uh, no, that's the um, construction costs for the building itself. Okay. All right. Uh, well, there is a lot of concern, as you've uh, accepted uh, from the beginning of our conversation this morning. Janet, uh, would you be willing to come back to us and uh, address some of the concerns of the local representatives and to talk about this with them on the programme? Um, could do. Will we arrange that? You may. OK, well, we look forward to doing that. And thank you very much indeed for joining us here on the programme this morning. All right, Michael, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much indeed. Janet Laveau is a spokesperson for Narconon. Uh, some local reaction uh, to the interview earlier with uh, the spokesperson for Narconon. Uh, this is uh, the group uh, behind the Drug Rehabilitation Centre that is uh, proposed uh, for Beliver as part of a Church of Scientology uh, effort, or so that is the fear. Anyway, let's uh, talk to Fidel Councillor Noel French. Good morning to you and thanks uh, for joining Good us. Morning, uh, you were listening to Janet Laveau earlier on in the programme. What did you make of it? Indeed, what did you make of the interview in the Mead Chronicle? Um, strange and surprising, uh, as you quite rightly said, they seem to have changed their policy. Uh, I first want to correct some uh, misinformation given out by the Narcanon spokesperson. Uh, drugs are not a big problem in Beliver. Uh, like everywhere else in Ireland, we do have a problem and it is very concerning, but it's not its not a big problem, as what was said. Uh, the biggest problem we've had with Narconon from, from day one is the secrecy, and uh, they would never talk to us. We invited them on a number of occasions, and uh, we gave them opportunities to come and talk to us, and uh, they have been involved in Beliver with 18 months now. Mm. 18 months uh, after they first became involved, they are now saying they want to, to talk to us and they now agree to talk to us on the radio. I don't really, I think the radio is not the, the place for talking. Well, they did write to you, people. in fairness, they did write to you, didn't they? And they asked to speak to you and they had hoped to speak to you and local people and local representatives before they spoke to the media. They did, they did. Uh, 18 months after they after they uh, uh, expressed an interest in, in, in Beliver, mm. we have a Section 5 gone into on board Planola, and we have to wait for a decision on that. Uh, I'm not sure, but it could conflict with us if we go talking to uh, Narconon now. Could they use that against us uh, in an on board Planola uh, situation to say that, well, we're now talking to them uh, when they wouldn't uh, talk to us for for, for 18 months. Mm. It's the large number of recovering addicts uh, that concerns us. Uh, it's one of the big concerns. 34 in a, a small village of uh, 1,700 mm. uh, people. And I, I couldn't understand it at all. I could understand that you'd find heroin addicts in English cities uh, who'd have €4,000 uh, a month to be yes. paying out to these people. Uh, it, it's incredible how they'll bring over so many people from England or wherever it is that they're coming from looking for reha drug rehabilitation uh, at that cost. Absolutely, but, uh, but also the spokesperson said that uh, any, any of the people in there recovering are not going to leave the premises without someone going with them. Like, how are they going to guarantee that? Are they going to have 24-hour monitoring of all of these ple people? Are they going to build a big wall around the place to ensure that absolutely no one leaves uh, that uh, premises? I, I don't know. Uh, we have prison escapes. Uh, this, uh, this doesn't have great big walls around it. It's the secrecy. 
It's the secrecy uh, the, uh, that, and, and yes, they've come to us now once we've lodged the section, the section five. But we've asked them, and they've actually lied to us before to say we approached uh, uh, Scientology and Narconon, and they said, "Oh no, we know nothing about Beliver. We know nothing, you know." And then all of a sudden, they start running to the media. Right. Uh, well, perhaps the person you spoke to didn't know about it, uh, and uh, perhaps I know in a big but, organization well, and something yes, major, well, ma- major happening. Mm. Uh, listen, bring them on the radio. We'll talk to them. Mm, okay. Uh, let me go to Tracy McElhinney, who's in Belibor as well. Uh, good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Michael. Did you no. did you hear the interview and what, what did I you think did, of it? And what yeah. did you what what did you think of what you're reading in the Meath Chronicle today as well? Um, I'd love to know what people have been talking to because the vast majority of people from Beliver, say, to Raharney, to Appoy, right round, um, have known about this, um, you know, the campaign to, that we don't we don't want this in the village. And but there's great all, support for this programme, apparently. <laughs> well, I'd love to know where the support is because most of the people I'm talking to and one of the committee members there, Anne Corrigan, I was at a funeral last week and she spoke to people and said, oh God, no, we don't want to see that and mm. they're all on board to help with the protests and stuff. Um, you, 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 you sound doubtful of the claim that was made on the programme this morning that there is great support locally for the programme. I don't think there is great support. I'd love to know who she's been talking to um, because I'm born and reared here and there's absolutely no way I want to see this coming into the village. Um, from the get-go, I was totally against it because for the simple reason, the proximity of the school, the childcare facility, mm. our community centre, which we have, you know, our scouts of a Monday night, we have the, the football, the GEA going into it most nights now this week, mm. uh, dance and everything like that all, all around, and then Little Steps Montessori right next door. You but what about the jobs to... and uh, the economic boost to the local economy? There will be no jobs. 18 Absolutely. jobs, I think she said. No, not a, not a hope. And there'll be local people, they'll employ gardeners and cooks and all sorts. Oh, I, I, I'd, lo- I'd, I'd love to see where, where the adverts are because the, the last gentleman that, that owned the building was promising all sorts of jobs as well and I really don't know what went wrong with the nursing home. I would love to have seen a nursing home come and that's what we, we want, not, not, not a drug rehab centre. And her claims that there's, that Beliver like there's, has a drug problem uh, like as Noel said, there, like every town and village in Ireland, there is there is drugs, but we haven't got a major problem. Noel, were you surprised at the claim that there's great support for the program locally? Uh, I was indeed. I do. Uh, I do know actually one person who is in support of it in in Beliver. I have his name and address, but I'm not going to, okay. to reveal it. But Michael, before you finish, I would like to just uh, say that we have a fundraiser this Saturday in the community centre and McLaughlin's in Beliver, and next Tuesday we're going to be outside the Dáil at about twelve thirty uh, protesting, and we would really appreciate anybody coming to support us. Right, what's the fundraiser for? Uh, we have to pay off uh, an, uh, a planning consultant and uh, we have to uh, provide uh, some more posters. Right, that's uh, to take this Section 5 Yes, uh, we, we, we got a very good person to do the Section 5 and uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have got some funds and we have, uh, we have that firm nearly paid off. Right. Uh, is uh, there no merit in this programme as far as you're concerned uh, because uh, we heard that it has seen great international success in terms of rehabilitating people who have uh, an addiction to drug. They're treated like students. There'll be no threat to the community. And on top of all of that, uh, there'll be the 18 jobs that come with this programme plus the uh, 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 injection of cash into Beliver and the surrounding areas. Absolutely, there is some positives in this. From a tidy town's point of view, I would love to see that building cleaned up and uh, being uh, being uh, a centrepiece for for the village. And from that point of view, yes. Uh, is there usefulness in the drug rehabilitation centre uh, uh, and uh, drug uh, drug facility? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, um, I applaud anybody who's involved in helping drug addicts to get off drugs. I'm involved in, in a, a group in our company in Navin myself, and uh, uh, people getting off getting off drugs. The difficulty here is uh, the 
Uh, this is not scientifically proven. It's not approved, approved by the HSC. It's not approved uh, by uh, HICWA. Um, I applaud them for doing it, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I have fear of, uh, of uh, dangerous things happening as well because... Um, you know, I went off cigarettes and I had to go to bed for 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 a, a week. Uh, these people are coming off heroin and and cocaine and other other things, and they're not even going to get an anodin for it. Mm. Well, they'll get vitamin tablets. What did you make of uh, the program, uh, Tracy? Uh, because uh, on one hand, it is cold turkey for these drug addicts coming off uh, whatever it is they're addicted to. Uh, on the other hand, then they get these vitamin tablets and uh, the sauna treatment and the moral guidance from Narconin, which is uh, associated with uh, the Church of Scientology. Uh, Mommy, the programs I've, I've kind of because I knew nothing about Scientology from until until this all started up. Just knew that there was Tom Cruise and John Travolta um, involved in all all this type of stuff. But um, as regards to the drug thing, if you talk to people that, that have, have come off drugs and have gone through their programs, um, most of the people that, have, that are, are supporting the, the campaign, they um, they tell you horrific stories. And uh, I I don't know. I'm I don't want to see somebody you know coming off drugs inside it, like because there's only a green. I, I'd love for people to be able to see the back of of, mm. of that primary school, uh, old primary school that that's owned by them now, but. To, to look and see that the, there's a community garden out the back of the community centre. And you have a green fence. I suppose they're going to put up a wall or whatever if the, if the planning and everything gets sorted out. But um, like to see somebody coming off that, and you've, you're bringing your kids down for a picnic or whatever, or you a fun day going on at the back of the community centre, and you see people coming off going cold turkey. I... I really think, you know, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Moral, moral guidance seems a, a, an odd thing to be giving in a health programme. Are, are, yeah. are you concerned or do you believe or do you accept the claim that this is a non-religious programme given that they will give moral guidance, as we heard very clearly this morning, that Narconin, which is associated with the Church of Scientology, will give moral guidance to people in their care? No, I... <laughs> I think they'll pump them for every shilling that they have, and, and uh, you know they'll they'll t- twist twist them against their families and everything. I I I I have no belief in them completely. I think they're it should be run out of everywhere. Right, well, the Church of Scientology says it doesn't do that sort of thing. It's not a cult. It is a church and is recognised in certain parts of the world as a, a church and as a legit, legitimate uh, religious movement. Uh, but having said that, that is uh, the concern that you have. Uh, Narconon yeah. says that it's not the Church of Scientology, that this is Narconon. Uh, do you accept that Narconon, uh, no French, will be offering a, a non-religious service to these recovering addicts? I am uh, not sure um, uh, from my reading of it, uh, and uh, don't forget, uh, I have only one side. It uh, does seem to suggest that a lot of the uh, recovering addicts uh, become members of the Church of Scientology and then go on further to uh, to uh, become uh, workers in these Narconon centres. Uh, so that's a little bit odd as far as as far as I'm concerned. As I said, we did uh, ask to speak to Narconon. Uh, we've been looking to speak to them for the last uh, three months. All of a sudden now they uh, they appear. Uh, I I think uh, I think it's, it's disrespectful really to be going on the radio and uh, media. We put out our position quite clearly that uh, we would talk to them after the section five. Uh, came out uh, at the response from on board Planola. I think they should respect that and okay. uh, let us talk. Uh, let us talk. Well, I- I- in fairness, they uh, did write to you and to others did, requesting we a, a meeting. By saying that we mm. would, we would uh, talk to them uh, after uh, Section Five. Decision oh, I know. Uh, and made. in fairness to them, we had asked that they would speak to us on the radio, and they said no. We want to have uh, the meetings with local people and their public representatives first. Their invitation was declined by you because of the Section 5 uh, and that is uh, why they changed their position and decided to speak to us today and to the Meath Chronicle earlier in the week. 
We leave it there for the moment though. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us here on the programme this morning. Noel French is a local Fine Gael councillor. We were also speaking with Tracy McElhinney. Michael, Michael Reed on, on LMFM. LMFM.